God has done everything. I'm just going to open the scriptures and just tell you what God has done already. And then after the message, you open your mouth wide and the Lord said, He will fill it up. It's going to be a good day today. All our brothers and sisters everywhere, we also greet you wherever you are. And you are listening now, we want to tell you, it's going to be better for your life and your family. And everything you touch, bad will turn to good. Terrible will turn to wonderful. Because Jesus, the Lord has come, he is on your side. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today and we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, because you sent Jesus Christ to bless us. Christ has come. And because Christ has come, all the works of the devil, they are destroyed from our lives. I bring all my brothers and sisters, all our children, everybody, and all our invitees. I bring everyone before you. I pray, Lord, everything today will turn to good in Jesus' name. Lord, where there are tears, I pray your wife those tears away. Where there is any sorrow, take the sorrow away. Where there is sickness, take the sickness away. Where there is affliction, take the affliction away. And I pray, Lord, your power will descend mightily today and bless your wonderful people in Jesus' name. Hold our hands. Answer the prayers of your people. And Lord, I pray at the end, everybody without exception will rejoice in your presence. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at the message, a wonderful discovery. A wonderful discovery. There are many people that go through life with their eyes closed. There are many people that go through life with their minds closed. There are many people that go through life with their understanding darkened. And the day Christ comes to you and he opens your heart and he opens your mind and he opens your eyes to see what you have never seen, that day you'll make a wonderful discovery. And this day, you have got it. How many years we have got the riches of heaven and the hidden treasures of heaven and of Christ all around us. And the Lord has supplied all that we need for the spirit, for the soul, and for the body. But because our eyes were not open to those riches and they were not open to those treasures, because of that, many of us, we have gone through life not enjoying what belongs to us. But this day, there is a discovery already. You will discover those hidden treasures. You will discover those heavenly riches. And they will bless your life in Jesus' name. There is a prayer you need to be quietly praying while the message is going on. In Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 18. Open thou mine eyes. Open thou mine eyes. What a prayer. Did you see the psalmist preach like this? It's because he knew. There are many, many treasures of the Lord. And there is much wealth and riches that belong to the believer that heaven has provided. But until God opens our eyes, we'll not be able to see. Open thou my eyes, you will see. That I may behold wondrous things. That I may behold wondrous things. There are many people they come into the Christian faith and all they can tell is that they behold terrible things. Terrible experiences. Unwanted experiences. 
I'm telling you, God is going to reverse every negative thing in your life. Because He will open your eyes and you will behold the wondrous, wonderful things out of His Word that belongs to you. Open that mind. Eyes that I. Not only that we, yes, we are going to have our eyes open, but you in particular. There is something that belongs to you that you have never seen. You will see it today. There is something you possess, you have never held, you will hold it today. There is something heaven has given you as a gift and you have never enjoyed. But this is your day. Open thou my eyes, that I in particular may behold wondrous, wonderful things out of thy law. Exodus chapter 15. In Exodus chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 23. Exodus chapter 15. Verse 23, And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of each was called Mara. They were going on a journey. Life is like a journey. When you became a child that is when you came to this world you started moving on and moving on up to this stage and it's a journey how many times in your journey have you found a bet a bitter experience a terrible experience an unwanted experience when the children of israel were going from egypt unto the land of canaan they never thought, they never knew they will meet any place that is called Mara, bitterness, unwanted, unexpected experience. But so it happened. But thank God, even though it has happened this that way, God will show us something today. Verse 25, and he cried unto the Lord. And everything is a body for you. And you have opened your heart to pour out that body. The Lord has assured us is going to give you a ready answer. And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree. God will show you something. Something you have never seen. You know their minds were closed. Their eyes were closed. Their intelligence closed, their understanding darkened, they couldn't see. There is solution. But I want to tell you, there is solution for every problem. There is solution for every problem. The reason we have not seen it is because we have not prayed that prayer. Open up my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. And Moses cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him. A tree, the tree had been there all the time. And the tree was there when they, before they got there. The solution to your problem had been here before you came here. The answer to your prayer had been reserved for you before you ever got here. All you need to do is for God to just touch your heart and open your eyes and see. This is the solution to your problem. And then we're told, the Lord showed him a tree, which when he cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And there he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he proved them. Verse 26, and said, as a result of that discovery, as a result of God opening the eyes of Moses, as a result of God in our eye today, is what God said He will do. That He will touch our lives. He will turn everything around. He will transform our lives. And every impossibility will become possible in Jesus' name. I want to remind you that in that verse 25, 
he made a statute with them. God opening our eyes is not just to give us one isolated, solitary blessing only one day in the year. It's to make a statute. And it's to make a covenant, an ordinance. And this is the statute. And this is the ordinance. And this is the covenant that the Lord is making. Look at it now in verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And that is what we are doing now. If thou wilt diligently hearken. In this church we praise the Lord. We always listen. And as you listen, the Lord will bless you. I said the Lord will bless you because you accept the word, because you receive the word, and because you believe the word, and because you know this is the word coming from the Lord. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. That's why God has given us grace. To do that which is right, and we will do that which is right. We will live according to his word. And that life that is lived in obedience to the word of God will bring untold, numberless, countless blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. And will give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes. Then he said, I will not I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. You see what God is saying? He said, When I open your eyes and I show you the tree and I show you the benefit coming from the cross of Christ that you have never beheld, that you have never seen before. When I open your eyes and you see and behold, and I make this covenant and statute and ordinance with you, then he says, then he says, I will put none of the diseases of Egypt of the world upon you. You will not have the diseases of the world. I said you will not have the diseases of the world. They say this is a major disease in the world. That one is a rampant disease in the world. That one is a terrible, life-threatening disease in the world. It will not come to you. God said, I will put none. I will put none. I will put none. He didn't say some or just a few. But he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you. Which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that does what? I said that does what? That healeth you. You are healed in Jesus' name. Because the favor of the Lord is upon our lives. Because the goodness of God is upon our lives. And because the grace of God is inexhaustible. The grace of God that covers every problem and every sin and every situation in which man finds himself. Because of that grace and because of that goodness, it says, I am the Lord. Not I was, not I will be, but I am in the present tense today. I am the Lord that... That's what? He lets be. You are healed in Jesus' name. There is no reason. With all this wonderful blessing of God, there is no reason. With all this proclamation, pronouncement of the Lord, there is no reason why any of us should ever keep any sickness that belongs to the world. They belong to the world, we we'll throw it back to the world. I said we we'll throw it back to the world and the blessing and the healing and the deliverance and the health and the victory and the dominion that belongs to the child of God will receive and will claim in Jesus name.
It will open your eyes and you will see. The moment you see, when your eyes are open, the moment you see, when your mind is open, the moment you see, when your heart is open, you'll discover the riches of the hidden wells that the Lord has prepared, provided for every one of us in Luke. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 6, 15 and 16. Luke verse 24. I'm reading from verse 15. And it came to pass that while they commute together, and reason Jesus himself drew near and went with them. For their eyes were holding that they should not know him. That's the problem many people have. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is so near. But their eyes are closed, held up, holding that they did not know the Savior. And there are many people that are sick all over the world. And Jesus Christ, the great physician, is right there with them. But their eyes are holding that he is held up and closed, bandaged. That they could not see Jesus Christ, the healer, the great physician. Many people are afflicted. Many people are tormented. Many people, the devil and the God of this world is bringing terrible oppression, affliction upon them. And Jesus Christ, the deliverer, is close by, right by their side. And their eyes are holding that they could not see. The Lord is by your side there. The healer is by your side there. The deliverer is by your side there. The one that transforms life and changes every negative thing to positive is right there. I pray you will see him today. In Bastachi, in Bastachi, and it came to pass as a search at meat was them. He took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave unto them. Christ will give something to you. I said he will give something to you. What then happened? But start at one. And their eyes. And their eyes. And the eyes of the people. That he didn't know that Jesus Christ was near. That Jesus Christ, the Savior, was right there with them. That he didn't know that the healer was there with them. That he didn't know that the one that turns our lives around. The people that didn't know that Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, and the healer, the Deliverer. They didn't know that Jesus Christ was there. The moment he gave them the bread. He'll give you the bread of life. And their eyes were open and they knew you will know. I said you will know. And they knew that he, they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. But already he dropped the blessing. He gave the blessing. When he reveals himself to you, when he shows himself unto you, Blessing will come to you in Jesus' name. Healing will come to you in Jesus' name. The power of the Almighty will be released into your life. The moment you see and the moment you know that this is Christ and that Christ is right there by your side and the power of heaven will have a great, great effect in your life in Jesus' name. But he did something else. He also expounded the word of God unto them. We're looking at verse 32. And this said, One to another, Did not our heart burn when within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened unto us the scriptures? Didn't our heart 
born, data had to yearn, data had to desire. Wasn't there something stirring up in our hearts when he opened to us the scriptures? He'll open the scriptures to you today, and your heart will be transformed, and your life will be transformed. And every circumstance, every situation in your life will be transformed in Jesus' name. You will make a wonderful discovery. I will make a wonderful discovery. I said, I will make a wonderful discovery. And when that discovery comes into your life, things will no longer be the same again. Everything will change completely in your life. It is so in Jesus' name. Give me good, good, amen. We're looking at three points in the message. Number one, the discovery of his hidden provision. The discovery. The discovery of his healing provision is there. The Lord has provided it. And yet, it's hidden from many people. And the day God opens your mind and opens your heart and opens your eyes, you will make that discovery. Number two, the declaration of his heavenly precept. The declaration. The declaration of his heavenly precept. And then number three, the demonstration of his healing power. It is coming. I said it's coming. The demonstration of his healing power. What's number one? I said what's number one? The discovery of his healing provision. We're looking at Genesis. In Genesis chapter 21, Genesis chapter 21. What did in there from verse 15? You will see here what happens when God has made a provision, and that provision was hidden from this person in need. And then all of a sudden, the Lord made, made her to discover that hidden provision. And what joy, what relief, what release when that provision was revealed in Genesis chapter 21, verse 15. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child on the one of the shops. And sat her down over against him. A good way, a good way up. As it were a bush shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. Here we find a woman, a name, Hagar. She had a child, Ishmael, and Abraham had given bread and a bottle of water, but the water was finished, and she didn't know how she'll be able to get water to quench the thirst and the need of the child, and the child began to cry, and the child was in terrible need. And she couldn't find, she couldn't see any provision. The provision was hidden. Maybe today your child has a problem. And you have been looking for solution. And it appears you are in a strange land. And you don't have the way with her. How you can solve the problem. The Lord is going to reveal to you where the solution is. And here... The woman lifted up her voice and she cried. And she wept in verse 17. And God heard the voice of the lad. And God had not just the voice of the mother, not just the weeping and the crying and the sorrow of the mother. 
even that little child. And God heard the voice of the Lord. You and your child, whatever the needs are, I want to declare to you, the Lord has heard your cry. He knows where you feel the pain. He knows where you feel the problem. He knows where you feel the challenge. And the Lord himself, by his mighty power and revelation, is going to reveal to you what the revelation is. And you are going to have the solution in your life in Jesus' name. Then we are told in verse 17, God had the voice of the Lord and the angel of the Lord, the angel of God, called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not. The Lord is telling you, Fear not. I said, The Lord is telling you, Fear not. Will this problem be solved? Fear not. Will this sickness be healed? Fear not. Will this oppression be taken away? Fear not. Will this situation ever change? Fear not. You will not fear. It says, Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Arise. Eat up the Lord. Hold him in thine hand. I will make him a great nation. God will get something great out of you. Something wonderful out of you. The present situation will turn around. The present situation will change. And according to the promise of God, when he says, I will, then he will. And nothing will turn him around in Jesus' name. Now, verse 19 is where we're going. Verse 19 is where we're going. And God did what? Tell me out loud. Opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She got opened her eyes. The well of water was near her all the time. The provision was nearby all the time. The provision had been made by the Almighty God in that same place where He was. But he is, her eyes were not open. And you know, sometimes this is the reason why some people run away from this wonderful church. They have a problem. And they have cried, they have wept, they are sorrowful, and they have not seen the problem. And then they say, the power is not there, the power is there, the healing is there, the deliverance is there, the dominion is there, the provision is there. Only what you need is that your eyes will be opened. I said your eyes will be opened. And because they think, they think. That the power is not there. They see the healing is not there. Then they throw away their child. Or they throw away their responsibility. Or they throw away some gifts the Lord had given them. And they go about in tears searching for the solution. When the solution is right there. God opened her eyes. Your eyes are opened already. And then she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water. The empty bottle was filled. The empty bottle of your life will be filled. And gave the large drink. And gave the large drink. I'm coming to judges. All you need is that your eyes will be opened. And you'll see the power of God is so very near. The healing of God is so very near. The deliverance of God is so very near. Judges chapter 15. In Judges chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 17. We're talking about the discovery of God's healing provision. Judges. Chapter 15, verse 17. And it came to pass when they had made an end of speaking that he cast away the trouble out of his hand and called that place Ramas Lehi. That's something. He had had a great, great victory. 
after that great victory, what the Lord used in giving that victory was the jawbone of an ass. And he threw away the jawbone of the ass. And then in verse 18, and he was sore at thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. You see the situation here, powerful something, mighty something, conquering something they conquer, something they conquer. He became thirsty. Again, there was no water for him to drink. And the situation became so terrible and so pathetic that he then began to say, I'm going to die of thirst. I'm going to die of the want, of the need. I'm going to die of what I need and I cannot find. And they were told in verse 19, But God claimed an hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. You see what they had, what they had thrown away. The jawbone of the ass, they felt, this is useless. This, I don't have any need of this. I'm used to, to kill and to destroy the enemies of righteousness and the enemies of the purpose and the plan of God. And then he threw it away and felt there is nothing in it anymore until God opened that jawbone of an ass. And then water gushed out of it from the unexpected place. Your miracle has come. All you need to do is just open your eyes and see what the Lord has provided already. And in that verse 19 it says, And, and then he went, when he had drunk the water, the spirit came again. And he revived, wherefore he called the name thereof and Hakore, which is in Lehi until this day. All I'm praying for and all you are praying for is that God will open your eyes and you will see that your miracle, your blessing, the provision is closer to you than you ever thought. God is promising you that before the end of the prayer, He will go before you and when you rise up to pray and you open your mouth, He will fill you with miracle and blessing. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. I'm reading from verse 2. Isaiah 45, verse 2. I will go before thee. Give me a good amen. amen. And make the crooked places strange. What else do I need? What else do you need? What else are you looking for? The Lord says, in your journey through life, you're looking for job, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for a good wife, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for a good husband, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for children, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for provision, the Lord says, it will go before you. And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. Any gauge that is standing between you and your blessing, the Lord said, don't worry about those gates, it will break them down. It will demolish them. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness. That is, the treasures that are hidden away by the dark. Because, you know, when there is darkness, we don't see the treasures, we don't see the provision. But the Lord is saying, in the time when things are dark, when it's very black and very dim in the night, and then you say, I'm searching, I'm looking, I cannot find, the Lord says, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Mark that in your Bible. Do you know why the world is talking about this depression and recession and economic downturn? Oh, because they cannot see 
the provision of the Lord. And it is when God begins to open the eyes of those who are in charge. And he says, but look at this hidden treasure. But look at this hidden provision. And look at everything I provided. Whether their eyes are opened or not, even before their eyes get opened, your own eyes will be opened. The hidden riches, the secret places, the Lord will reveal to you. Don't say you are poor again when the, when the riches are declared and provided for you. Now you are rich in the Lord. Then the weak say, I am strong. Then the poor say, I am rich. Then the sad people say, I am happy. You are happy in the Lord. The Lord has provided all your needs and all your problems are solved in Jesus' name. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, will which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. And the Lord will reveal everything unto you in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And you wonder why are Christians sometimes in need, and they need this fighting in their lives, and yet. They pray and pray and pray and it appears it is still like that. Is it because God has forgotten them? God will never forgive, forget you. I said God will never forget you. He remembers you. But what has happened? Oh, what has happened is I has not seen. The thing is hidden. And because it is hidden, you cannot see. And then it says, ears have not heard, you have not seen it, you have not heard of it, neither has entered into the heart of man. And because it has not entered into your heart, that's why you say, God, where are you? God, what are you looking at? I need this, I need this, and I need that. But look at verse 10. But God has revealed them. God has revealed them. All the provision we need, all the power you need, all the oppression of the mighty walking spirit of God that you need in your life. It says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Will you have them? I said, will you have them? Now when you have them, you're going to rejoice in the provision of the Lord. That was hidden before, but now you can find. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me. And what did he say? And I will answer. He didn't say, I may answer. If I'm in a good mood, if I'm happy, I may answer you. He said, there's no doubt in your heart. Because God has declared it. And he said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee. That was show, that was show. And show thee. They were hidden before. You have not found them. When you hear the testimonies of other people, God did this for me. You say, that is great. You say, that is mighty. How is it? I have never seen anything like that before. But the Lord is saying now, every good testimony you have heard from other people, the Lord says, I will show thee great and mighty things. God will show it to you. It will reveal it to you. When it says, I will show thee, that means I will open your eyes to see. 
and open your mind to understand. I will open your heart and you will see very clearly and very definitely what the Lord has provided for you. Call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Which thou knowest not. You didn't know it before this day. You will see. You will have. You will possess. You will know it. I'm coming back to Exodus chapter 15. Point number two. The declaration of his heavenly precept. The declaration of his heavenly precept. The Lord has promised us already. And he said, if we call unto him, he will reveal, he will show what it, we didn't know before, great and mighty things that we knew not. But now he's going to give us the declaration of his heavenly precept. Look at this. In, verse, in chapter 15 of Exodus, chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And search, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in the sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I'm sure you've read that verse before. We even read it earlier today in the introduction to the message. I'm pointing something to you here. I'm pointing number one. If thou, if thou, verse 26, and said, if thou, that means if you, that's the human part. And then in that same, in that same verse, it says, I will. The human part, if thou, the divine part, the part of God, I will. I want you to I want you to look at the Bible now and look at the Bible with those two parts, with those two leaves of the door, with those two ends of the rope. If thou on one hand, I will on the other hand. That's what we are going to look for now. Remember, if thou, then I will. If thou then I will. We're looking at Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. Be looking for those words, if thou I will. If thou I will. Verse 22. But, tell me, tell me, if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then what? I will. You see that they are connected together. They are the two ends of that rod. If thou, on the one hand, will obey the voice of the Lord your God and do all that I speak, it says, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies. If you will obey the word of God and thank God, thank God as children of God, you are obeying the word of God. I said you are obeying the word of God. And as you do that, and it says, seest thou, and if thou will do this, then I will be an enemy to your enemy. God will fight your enemies for you. And an adversary unto thine adversaries. I'm looking at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Remember what we're looking for. If thou, then I will. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. 
and it shall come to pass if thou you see that you see that it's always there and it is always the first part the human part the lord wants to see our commitment unto him so that he can shovel and he can flow the blessings of god into our lives and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hack him diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will that's the same thing i will the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth promotion has come exaltation has come increase has come in your life in jesus name if thou then i will pursue and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god blessings will run after you Verse 7, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. And they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee. How many ways? Seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in all thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 9, the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be what? afraid of thee and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of thy body you are not barren anymore I said, you are not barren anymore. In the foot of thy cattle, and in the foot of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. How many parts of your work will the Lord bless? All. Oh, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Anywhere you are in your family, you'll be the head and not the tail. In your company, in your corporation, you'll be the head and not the tail. In your school, in your education, you'll be the head and not the tail. In your profession, you will be the head, you will not be the tail. Because the Lord said, if thou, when you're hacking to the word, and you're obedient to the word, and you give your heart and your life unto the Lord, if Thou, then God says, then I will. He will so promote you and exalt you, and nothing will be impossible in your life anymore in Jesus' name. And thou shalt be above only. January till December, thou shalt be above only. One year to another year, thou shalt be above only. From a bachelor to a married man, thou shalt be above only. From a spinster to a married woman, a wife, thou shalt be above only. And with your children, the family will be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. 
I thought you'd say amen to that. <laughs> if thou, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. You see what the Lord is telling us? If thou, if thou, then I will. First Kings chapter 3. In First Kings chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 14. And remember what we're looking for, those words, if thou, I will. If thou, I will. In First Kings chapter 3, verse 14. And if thou will walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. There are some people that are asking, how can they live long? Here is a secret. How is it? What will I do? What will I eat? How will I live? What kind of exercise should I get involved in? How do I modify my diet so that I will live long? Listen, the Lord has a plan for you that you will live long. I said the Lord has a plan for you that you will live long. But now he says, if thou then I will. And isn't it very simple, verse 14? If thou wilt walk in my ways. Thank God you have decided to walk in the ways of the Lord. You will live long. I said you will live long. Because the Lord said, If thou then I will, if thou wilt walk in in my ways and keep my commandments and my commandments as a father David did walk then I this is the commitment of the almighty God this is the covenant of the almighty God this is the pronouncement irreversible irrevocable pronouncement of the Lord that she you will do this and keep on walking and keep on living according to the commandments of the Lord. Then the Lord said, I will lengthen thy days. In First Kings chapter 6, First Kings chapter 6, we're looking at verse 12. Remember again, if thou, then I will, if thou. Then I will. First Kings chapter 6, verse 12. Concerning this house which thou art in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then I will perform my watch with thee. You see that? If thou, as a human being, as a child of God, a child, an obedient child in the family, a faithful child in the family, a loyal servant in the ministry, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, a dependable disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, Following the Lord, following the Lord, following the Lord. If thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word for thee, which I speak unto David thy father. The Lord himself will be with you. And I will dwell among the children of Israel. I will not forsake my people Israel. The Lord will not forsake us. You in particular, the Lord will not forsake you. You see your interest in following the Lord. You see your desire in serving the Lord. You see your consecration in obeying the commandments of the Lord. You see your earnestness in wanting to live 
how God wants you to live. And you have seen how you deserve the grace of God abundantly in your life to live the life He has laid and to run the race He has laid before you. And He says, because of that passion in your heart, that desire in your soul to live according to His word, He said, He will bless you and you are blessed in Jesus' name. In 1 Kings chapter 11, 1 Kings chapter 11, I mean in from verse 38, 1 Kings 11, 38, and it shall be if thou, you see that, it's everywhere, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do that, is right in my sight to keep my statutes and my commandments as David my servant did that I will be with thee you see on the one hand if thou and then you see on the other hand I will if thou wilt walk in the commandments of the Lord and you will live according as he has declared in his word then he says then I will be with thee. The Lord will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So you may boldly say, You will not be afraid. What can man do unto you? And build thee a sure house as I built for David and will give Israel unto thee. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. I want to see what the Lord is reminding us of. And he says, If thou, then I will. Jeremiah chapter 15, we're looking at verse 19. This is wonderful. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If thou return, then I will bring thee again. If thou return. Hey, you know, sometimes uh, somebody gets confused. And battered and unhappy and because he could not see the provision of the Lord he went away he backslid and the Lord is saying I want to bless you I'm waiting for you and if thou shalt return then I will bring thee again and thou shalt stand before me you will stand before the Lord again you will serve the Lord again you will harvest the blessings of the Lord again. But you know, you cannot just sit back there and say, if God wants to bless him, let him bless me. You will do like the prodigal son. I will arise and go unto my father. And I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your child. Once you say that and you come, the Lord will receive you. If thou then I will look at verse 20 and I will make I will make thee unto this people a fenced prison wall. The Lord will protect you. They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. I thought you were saying amen to that. If you return to the Lord and thank God we have returned. I said we have returned. Why are we here if we have not returned? Why did you come if you have not returned? There's something in your heart saying, I want to connect with God again. I want to see the power, the provision of the Lord in my life once again. There's something in your heart that desires. I want to be the best I can be in the kingdom. That's why I'm here. You have returned. And as you have returned, the blessings of God will be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name. Then it says that for I am with thee to save thee. And to deliver thee, says the Lord, in verse 21, And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. If thou, that's all the condition. That's man's responsibility. And this is God's promise. 
that if thou, if thou shall return with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, then it says, I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. It has happened already. I said it has happened already. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 7. Zechariah chapter 3. If thou, then I will. Zechariah chapter 3. We're looking at verse 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways. You can see that from all these scriptures that we read. You see the first edge of the line. And then you see the last edge of the line. The first end of the line. If thou wilt walk in my ways. When you promise the Lord. When you covenant with the Lord. When you consecrate unto the Lord. You say, Lord, forgive me all the past instability. And forgive me, Lord, all the past inconsistencies. And forgive me, Lord, the past insensibility to your word. But now I'm making up my mind. I can see if thou wilt do this, then this is what you promise that you will do. And then you come to make a new commitment of your life unto the Lord, of your will, your mind, your obedience, and your consecration unto the Lord. Then the Lord says, if you will do that, then this is what I will do. As you become faithful to the Lord and say, Lord, I've had your word, and I'm going to do according to your word. The Lord will not disappoint you in Jesus' name. He has said a lot of I will, I will, I will, I will in your life. He has pronounced blessing upon you, and that blessing will come in Jesus' name. Look at that again. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt judge my house, and shall also keep my cause, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. The Lord is saying he'll give you an exalted place, an important place, a respectable place in the midst of the people of God. Number one, the discovery of his hidden provision. Number two, the declaration of his heavenly precept. Number three, the demonstration. Didn't he say, I will? That I will assures us of the demonstration of his healing power. Demonstration. Everybody say demonstration. He will demonstrate it in your life. He'll put it into your life. And the blessings of God that will flow into your life and enrich your heart. That blessing will be so wonderful today. You will have more than you are requesting in Jesus' name. The demonstration of his healing power. We're looking at Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 8 and from verse 9. Numbers chapter 21 verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one, how many people? How many people? You know, many people, when they don't read the Bible very well, they say, yes, I know God is healing the sick. I know God is delivering their prayers. But how about me, everyone? And this includes you. I said this includes you. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Thank God, everyone. Your sicknesses are healed. Your oppression is taken away. All your discouragement is gone in Jesus' name. 
that every one that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And thank God that includes you, you are going to live. In fact, we are told in John chapter 3, John chapter 3, telling us the lesson we need to learn from that event that took place. For the children of Israel were the lifted of brazen serpent, that everyone that beheld, every one of them lived. John chapter 3 verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever. In the Old Testament it says everyone. In the New Testament it says whosoever. That's the same thing. That means you, that means me, that means every one of us. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and then in isaiah chapter 53 isaiah chapter 53 what do you mean from verse 3 isaiah 53 verse 3 he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we did a seat what we hid our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely. Everybody say surely. surely. That means certainly, 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 without a shadow of doubt. There's no doubt in your mind. Christ died for you. And Christ sacrificed for you so that your sins can be forgiven and so that your sicknesses can be healed. And what a wonderful thing to discover that salvation is for everyone and healing is for everyone because there is a surely that proceeds that comes along with that provision of the Lord surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows he has carried your sorrows away I said he carried your sorrows away why are you going to be carrying it again? You look at somebody's face and the way the face is, you say, my brother, are you carrying something on your back, in your mind, in your heart? Are you carrying something? You look at a married sister and maybe there is no child yet. And then you look at the sister as she's going. You say, my sister, I look at your face. Are you carrying something? Oh, she says, I'm carrying a lot of sorrows. Drop your sorrows down. Jesus Christ has carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded by our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And uh, with his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. Let's see the interpretation of that in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. All the demon possessed people that are brought here and anywhere, I declare unto you, they are delivered in Jesus' name. That is what Jesus came to do. That is what Jesus came to provide. And that is in fulfillment of the pronouncement, the proclamation, the prophecy of Isaiah. And it says when the evening was come, commenting and interpreting on what Isaiah had prophesied and proclaimed. When that evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits. With what? With what? 
with his word. As you are hearing the word that the word is coming your way this day, all those manifestations and all those operations and all those manoeuvrings and all those things the devil is trying to do in your life, in your family, they are cast out in Jesus' name. And he healed all that was sick in verse 17, that it might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled, that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He carried away our sicknesses, and thank God they are gone. In First Peter chapter two, First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-four. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who is so sell, bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. Sinfulness is gone, righteousness has taken its place. Now you can live a righteous life. You're free. You are clean, but you. your yoke is broken. And that sin that was sticking on your life, and the sin that will not let you go and live a happy life, a holy life, and heavenly life, that sin cleaving unto you, saying, I will not allow you to live a victorious life. All that sin is broken and taken away. Christ died for us on the cross of Calvary, that we will be able to live a righteous, holy, victorious life that has dominion. And then, by whose stripes? Tell me the rest. You are healed. Thank God, thank God, thank God you are healed. Psalm 107. 107. Psalm 107. We're looking at verse 20 there, Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and did what? And that's why the word is coming to you today. The Lord is sending the word of power into your life today. The word of healing into your body today. The word of deliverance in your life, in your family today. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. That thing that is trying to destroy your joy and destroy your health and destroy your happiness and destroy the goodness of God in your life. He sent his word unto them and he destroyed all their destructions. He took away all their destructions. That miracle, that blessing, that healing, that salvation, that forgiveness, that righteousness and that healing is yours in Jesus' name. That's why all you need is the word which is coming to you now. And the word that is sent to you will produce a miracle in your life in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8 verse 8. Matthew chapter 8 verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only everybody says speak the word only do you understand that the word without holy water the word only the word without holy oil the word only the word without a match on the ground the word only the word without anybody pushing you down the word only the word without anybody laying hands on you send the word he sent his word and healed them the word without burning candle the word the word only the word without burning incense the word only the word without the picture of a religious leader the word only speak the word 
and the word is coming to you now and i speak this word of healing it's your life it's your family you are healed in jesus name speak the word only and my servant shall be healed the lord has opened your eyes i said the lord has opened your eyes now you know the hidden treasure that belongs to you now that the lord has opened your eyes you will open your mouth everything you declared for your life is confirmed in jesus name psalm 81 verse 10 psalm 81 verse 10 i'm waiting for you to this is very important this is the secret of your victory you have the victory already psalm 81 verse 10 i am the lord who's god thy god this is your god the creator of the heavens and earth is your god the great physician the healer is your god the great savior is your god the one that never fails that never lost a battle he is your god the one that fights all the phoenixes and the Amalekites and he conquers them he is your god the one that delivers the oppressed he is your god he says i am the lord your god which brought you out of the land of egypt open your mouth wide and i will feel it open your mouth open your mouth open your mouth wide and i will feel it what do you need when you open your mouth and say this 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 it doesn't matter how large how big how great what you are looking for the lord will give you and the lord will affirm it and confirm it in your life in jesus name are you ready i said are you ready heaven is ready for you god is ready for you all the angels are ready the lord jesus christ is ready the holy ghost is ready and the word of god has provided everything if you are ready you get up you stand up and you open your mouth wide and say lord here am i today you have given me these great blessings untold blessings indescribable blessings and their mind and their mind and their mind and their mind everything you say Everything you say, everything you say, everything you say in prayer, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. The Lord has opened your eyes. He has made you to see. He has made you to understand. The provision of the Lord is available. Yes, it's available. The Lord has made you to see. It was very nearby. The healing is nearby. The deliverance is nearby. The provision is nearby. The miracle child is nearby. The victory is nearby. And the joy of the Lord is nearby. And the provision of the Lord is nearby. The riches of the kingdom is nearby. The wealth of the kingdom nearby. The treasure, the hidden treasure nearby. And the Lord is saying, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Miracle, very near. Deliverance, very near. Healing, very near. Miracle children, very near. Miracle husband, very near. Miracle wife, very near. Miracle job, very near. Miracle very near. Open your mouth wide and I will finish. Open your mouth wide. Tell the Lord what you need. Tell the Lord why you are here. You need forgiveness? It's there. It's there. Why should you suffer under guilt? under condemnation when forgiveness is there eternal life is very close by salvation is very close by the joy of salvation the triumph the victory in salvation is very nearby forgiveness is very nearby life and life more abundant very much nearby and the Lord is just saying, it is yours, it is yours, it is yours. You can open your mouth wide and the Lord will feel it. Miracles, very 
Healing, there in there. Deliverance, there in there. Provision, there in there. Children, there in there. And a wife from the Lord, there in there. A good husband from the Lord, there in there. An open door breakthrough, there in there. Success, very near, no defeat again, no sorrow again, no heartache again. The Lord is saying, open your mouth wide and I will finish. This is your day. This is your chance. The Lord himself has come down in a mighty way to bless your life. To enrich your life. And the Lord is saying, Tell me what you need. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you need. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. And I will feel it. Tell him as much as you need. Spiritual victory. Domestic victory, all that fire born in your family, the Lord will quench it and put it out. All the powers of darkness, waging war against your life, against your family, the Lord will quench and destroy all the oppression, all the affliction, all the attack. The Lord will eradicate, wipe it out. Open your mouth wide and I will finish. That's his promise. He cannot fail. He will not fail. He said, if thou, then I will. If thou. Then I will. We rejoice in the fact that God is a faithful God, is a mighty God, is a powerful God, is a God that changes not, a God of all power, a God of all possibilities. He has invited you here to bless you, and He said, If thou wilt. Do this, then I will give you all the mighty, manifold blessings, miracles you expect from the Lord. If thou wilt, then I will. If thou wilt, then I will. If thou wilt, then I will. In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing, trusting, confident people of God said, Have your eyes been opened? I said, Have your eyes been opened? Has your heart been opened? Do you know what belongs to you already? Do you know that healing belongs to you? Do you know that miracle belongs to you? Do you know that power belongs to you? Do you know that impossibilities are possible right now? For you and your children, for you and your wife, for you and your husband, and for you and everybody around you, this is the day of your miracle. You have got it in Jesus' name. You raise up your hand now, reach out and touch. Reach out and take. Reach out and receive. It is yours in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we are not blind anymore. We thank you because we are not ignorant anymore. Now we know what you have provided. And we know what we possess. Lord, we reach out now and we receive in Jesus' name. Lord, the provision of eternal life. The provision of salvation. The provision of forgiveness, the provision of redemption, the provision of reconciliation with the Almighty God. As many as have been far away from God and you are feeling the guilt 
and the condemnation of sin. I pray right now, you forgive all their sins. Wipe away all their guilt, all their condemnation in Jesus' name. Open their eyes, the eyes of their understanding for them to know all their sins have been forgiven. All the condemnation has been taken away. Lord, I pray that the joy of salvation, the peace that comes with salvation will come into their hearts right now in Jesus' name. Lord, you have opened our eyes to see that healing belongs to us. Healing belongs to everyone. Whatever the name of the sickness, the name of Jesus is above every name. Above the name of cancer. Above the name of ulcer. Above the name of kidney failure. Above the name of pain in the joints. Above the name of tuberculosis. Above the name of insanity. The name of Jesus is above every name. And that name of Jesus will conquer every sickness in Jesus' name. Whatever sickness, whatever infirmity, and whatever pain on you, on your wife, on your children, on your husband, right now with that name of Jesus, I cancel it now. I destroy it now. Every oppression is taken away. Every attack is taken away. Every affliction is taken away. And Lord, I pray, every insanity, every madness taken away in Jesus' name. I pray that the Jericho walls will fall down in every life. Impossibilities will be possible. Lord, tangible miracle, visible miracle, observable miracle, give to everyone now in Jesus' name. Every work of the devil on any person here, in the body, in the mind, in the brain, in the family, all those works of the devil, they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Lord, release your power. Release the healing. Release the miracle. The release, the deliverance upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I know it is done. Lord, I know it is done. You have done it. You have done it. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you because we know you have done it. Confirm it in every life. Confirm it in everyone right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, once again, everybody said, a fine 